Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be playing a little bit around with our Synology NAS. Um, so in this video, we'll actually be kind of getting started on what you can do with your Synology NAS and how to kind of get started with your storage pool and volumes. And then we'll probably create some more videos on how to utilize that, create some shares and other things. But we'll get started off with your basic of creating your storage pool, how you want to do that, and then creating volumes from it. So. This video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content, want to sponsor me, or send me some free swag, my email is in the description below. So check that out. Awesome. Okay, well, let's get started. All right. So you're, you've essentially got to the point where you have bought a new Synology, whether it's like your Prime Day, uh, Black Friday, or you're just like, I just want a Synology NAS. Um, and they're really cool, whether you bought it there or on eBay. Um, but if you bought it new and you spent a lot of money, that's also another way to do it too. So it depends on what your use case is for sure. Um, so, um, you know, obviously the first thing you kind of do is you got your GUI, you're logging to Synology NAS, you got, you know, this kind of page essentially, and you're like, okay, well, what can I do? How do I set up some stuff? So essentially the first thing that you will do um, after you get logged in, do all your updates and whatnot, is actually go to your storage manager. So being that this is a Synology NAS, right? You're gonna probably do some NAS network, you know, area storage stuff. Um, and that's essentially what you wanna do. So you can kind of see how, how um, storage pools and volumes are created where you essentially got your drives and which will be a collection for your storage pool. Um, and then from the storage pool, you can create volumes that you can use to essentially mount, um, whether SMB, NFS, whatever you want, um, from your you know local machine to your storage. Um, so we'll get started here. Um, so from here, you can pick your RAID type. So currently I am running a Synology NAS with only two base. So I, I'm very limited in regards to what kind of RAID types I can do. But the thing here to note is like, say for example, you got like an eight bay NAS and you only plan to populate like, like two or three, you know, um, hard drives in there because you don't want to spend the money to buy, you know, eight 16 terabyte drives all in one go, right? Um, so you'll probably get to a point where you can't RAID you know, do like a raid, a higher raid um, to raid, you know, like three drives when you only have two drives, right? So get started. But what you can do here, and depending on your situation, you can pick like um, HR, SHR, which is kind of a Synology hybrid raid, um, which will kind of help you be able to up change your RAID type from what you have based off how many disks you currently have to something else um, as you add more drives. Or you can also do basic where you can migrate from basic to like RAID 1 or RAID 5 um, for more data redundancy or data protection if you only have like, you know, one or two drives that you're starting off with. Um, so that's that's the one thing to note about this is, you know, if you're starting off with less drives than you want and you, and you, you do plan to, you know, change your RAID type, you want to make sure you pick one of these two so that you can, you know, easily optimize your volume in the future. Now, if you pick... JBD, JBOD, which is just a bunch of disks, you're just essentially just saying, hey, I'm just gonna slap all this data on all these disks, and if a disk dies, I essentially lose that data, right? Um, so you can pick this if you know, hey, I just I just want storage, that's all I want. You can pick this, but once you pick this, you can't, you know, change it. You can't just go, oh, well, I want to go from, you know, just, just a bunch of disks to like a RAID one. It does not work that way. Um, so in this case, I only have one drive in here. It doesn't really make a difference. I'm not gonna add more uh, since this is my test NAS. So I'm just gonna just do the Synology hybrid RAID and we will pick that for our storage. So we'll pick our drive here. Um, it's a six terabyte drive, um, uh, a Western Digital one. Uh, we'll click next. So there is also a list of compatible hard drives. Um, if you don't use a compatible hard drive, you can still use it, um, but obviously it kind of recommends specific hard drives. So um, you can check out that compatibility list if you decide to do so. But in this case, it, I've, I've used it with this Western Digital, no problems. I'm, I'm not too stressed, but obviously it's not a supported drive. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, next, you can skip drive check. So it won't, you know, check for bad uh, sectors or you can do the perform drive check and then it'll, you know, make sure, hey, you know, the drive is all good and everything. Um, if you're doing this like 
first and kind of like getting to learn everything, I would probably recommend to the perform the drive check if, if you're unsure of, you know, whether the hard drive is in a good state or not. Um, now, if you do do this, it will take a lot longer for the, the storage pool to initialize. So if you're like, hey, I already know the drive is good and whatnot, and I just want to get, get started, I mean, skip the drive check, and that's what we're going to do in this video. But if you're like, hey, I bought this off of eBay, eh, you might want to perform the drive check and, you know, wait that time to make sure everything's good. So um, then next, so after that, it will essentially tell you, hey, now you can create your first volume. So we'll make a 100 gig volume, we'll call it like volume one, um, and we'll hit next. So essentially, it'll create the storage pool off of this one drive that we have um, with H, uh, Synology Hybrid Rate. And then we'll, from there, we'll create a 100 gig volume um, and we'll apply. So erase data, apply, create this stuff. Um, so once it loads, um, it will start showing up here. So it's gonna create the pool, process the pool here. We got the 100 gigs allocated um, for, for this volume of the 5.4. Um, and we'll give it a few seconds here. I think it's actually gonna take probably like a whole, like five minutes maybe. Actually, no, it's actually pretty quick right now. All right, we'll fast forward to when this actually finishes creating. Okay, so now finished, it actually only took like 30 seconds, honestly. So it wasn't actually that bad. So now we got our storage pool and in the storage pool, we have one volume. So essentially that's kind of how you get started to create your storage pool and your volume. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could create another volume. So say for example, we wanted to use our other the storage pool again, and we wanted to create another 100 gig volume and we can name it volume two. Um, it will go through, you can add number of volumes. So in this case, it'll add volume two here, give it a second. Um, and then you'll see that there is this volume tool to um, being created. So if you know that you're gonna like separate like, you know, your backup volume with like your backup two volume because you want multiple backups or something, you can do that. Or if you, you know, like doing it for like a data store or something of that sort, the one thing to note here is um, when you pick the size, it doesn't necessarily mean you're stuck at 100 gigs, right? So if your storage pool has more space available, so in this case, I got 5.3 more terabytes available, um, you can actually um, increase the size. So say, for example, I was like, oh, hey, you know, 100 gigs is too small for our volume here. We can click on this, click on settings, and then down here, it can tell you what my max allocable size is because it says, you know, the 5.3 terabytes. And I can just bump this up to 200 and hit save. And it will actually increase and optimize that volume um, to, and essentially expand to 200. Um, you can do this in real time. So you don't have to like have everything get unmounted or whatnot. You can actually just update it and it will it's essentially successfully expand here. Um, I don't know if there's really like a performance impact from it. I haven't really tested in, in regards to that, but essentially you can just up it whenever you want. So that is kind of like the nice thing about being able to do stuff with your NAS that you can just increase it if you have free space in your storage pool. So there you go, guys. Um, that's essentially how you get started with creating a storage pool and creating volumes from it. Um, in our next video, we'll show you how to create a shared folder so that you can uh, use that shared folder with the volume um, and mount it, whether it's NFS or Samba shares. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.